Hello everyone, welcome to the 2024 Philippine Masters ABC Round 2 here in Manila, the Philippines. We've kicked it off today with some practice and a couple of rounds of seating. Ryan and Zach and myself, we're going to give you a track walk, talk to you a little bit about the layout, what Ed would see on the Creo have built. Let's get into it. Let's do it. All right, coming down the long straightaway here. Uh, you're picking up quite a bit of speed. It's kind of downhill. Um, yeah, our, we're, our feet are sticking to the oil that's been laid down on the track. You can feel it when you pick up your foot. Um, and you can feel it when your car's coming around here at about 40 miles an hour. Yeah, that's a big um, thing that I think they've done that's a change from last year to this year. Last year it was molasses as a treatment on the surface. This year they've oiled it. You can even see, and I don't know, Tony, if you can pick that up there. But um, as we get through midday and some of the hotter part of the day, the surface even bubbles a little bit. It starts to almost delaminate. It makes choosing the tyre compound through the day change. The track definitely goes through a couple of different cycles with the grip, and we'll talk a little bit about that as we get through it. But, yeah, we come down the straight um, and then into this pretty fast sweeping left-hander. Really cool-looking corner as the cars suck in low. And um, a critical part to starting a good lap is you head over this little rise, not wanting to wash out on the right-hand side here. you really got to keep a nice tight line, and that sets you up for the next jump section. Uh, probably something that's very evident on this track is a super high speed compared to last year. Um, there was quite a few uh, technical jumps, um, but we've just brought some more technicality in a different style this year. Um, it's really super high speed and it's very easy to, to wash off um, the line and the, the lap speed is being right on the apex. Uh, so this is a tricky one, um, completely different to last year. Um, you come and breaking down the hill. Um, super easy to run wide, but you know you need to be on the pipe here to set you up for the next section. Yeah, so what I noticed coming down the end of the straightaway, the driver stands so tall that you can't really see, but this is like a, your car like gets unweighted right here. And this is about where you want to be braking too. So this is like, first of all, a really critical corner. And second of all, you got to be on your mark with the braking. Um, so timing is, this is a pretty hard spot to time with your braking um, if you want to be close to the pipe right here. Yeah, really critical to be smooth on the brake here, um, get the front end set correctly for the next section. And most people that watch the videos from last year and all the online coverage from the crew would see that this section here is the same as it was last year. So we go into these tabletop section, relatively straightforward, and then I kind of step up and then into the hairpin. And you know, one of the things that we've noticed as we get through this next section, straight ahead on the jump, but maybe over jump the step up a little bit, you want to unweight the car and get it to pivot and rotate around the hairpin really, really quickly. So let's go and take a look at that and we'll walk you through the next jump section. Yeah, so this tabletop, I usually try and downside um, with the high temperatures and everything. The cars don't don't want to land very well flat. So if you like overshoot this and slap, it's going to mess you up for this step up. So definitely trying to downside that first tabletop. And I even saw a couple of the e-buggies. I think Lutz was really sending it on this tabletop section. And from the first tabletop, even landing maybe about here. I think that's one of his divots from when he nosed in earlier on today. So that was a, a new line that we've seen from the e-buggies. We didn't have e-buggy as a class last year, so they've been added to it. And um, that's been super interesting. Uh, this section, what we sort of said last year, um, was you're landing on the top and powering down the hill. But... Uh, we've definitely seen um, this line sort of change up a little bit this year and what majority of the drivers are doing is sort of jumping and landing in the corner uh, and the car's sort of landing and then rotating really nicely on the hairpin and you just gain heaps more speed. Um, if you roll down the hill, you just it's really hard to stay on the, on the hairpin and right on the pipe. Um, so jumping a little bit further and then getting on the gas out of the corner. Is that sort of what you're doing? Yeah, so for me, like the difference between a, a, a really good lap and a so-so lap is kind of landing almost down here. You would think you'd want to land up there, but you've got this tight 180, so I found that if I kind of put my car right here and turn and kind of get on the gas, it'll unweight itself and, and flick the rear around, and I can stay on power. It's super fast. Like um, Versus if I can't get it to flick around, it, it kind of takes time to get it to corner and rotate. Up over the single here and then into a, a double that's relatively straightforward. 
none of the jumps have got a lot of the technicality that we saw last year. I, you know, I'll say for sure, I think last year there was a huge amount of jumps on the track, a lot of corner jumps, a lot of technicality in the way you needed to set the car into the jump. And then even in the air, you know, we saw Ongaro really master that last year. What we have this year is a track that, yeah, there's a couple of jumps, but I think everyone can make them. It's a relatively straightforward track to drive around. A little challenging to squeeze out those super fast laps like we saw from, you know, Ryan and Alex and Yawn in the last couple of seating sessions down at the 36-2 level. But I think, Ryan, like what I watched you, you're, you're kind of landing around about here, right, and then just powering through and shooting through this next section. Yeah, this track here, especially this section, there's quite a, a few jumps that you need to jump a little bit further, and it's super easy to just land on top. But it's not faster than land on top. You actually need to sort of come out, land a little bit further in the down ramp, um, and you're just naturally carrying more, like more speed coming off the jump. Um, if you try and land on the top and power down, you're just too slow. So this is just another jump, really, just like the other one, where you want to jump a little bit further. Yeah, one thing with uh, this section, this is probably, this is probably the most Euro high-speed section of the track. Um, so, like, we don't see this at home in, in the U.S., um, but it's almost like you want to make one motion with this. Like, all the way to that sweeper over there, you're, set, you're setting up for that corner way back here. So, you're basically almost connecting the dots and trying to be as smooth as possible. And there's a lot of elevation here, too. So, it, you know, you can't really see it from the video or the driver's stand, but there's a super amount of elevation here. And even this section, as you come up the hill, like, it's nearly the height of me here. Um, but you don't really feel like that when you're on the stand and, and like your car doesn't really get that much air. We, you know, you get probably a foot of air as you come around that bank there and it's really high speed, hey? Yeah, super high speed and your car can definitely high center over this and, and tip over like I'm sure everyone's done at least a few times. Yeah, it's a fun section when you get right. I mean, you really know, and I think that's one of the keys to this track, you know when you're on a really good heater of a lap, you're tied in on the pipe, you know, very much like you would be with an on-road car quite yeah. frankly right it's a it's a lot of those on-road style of lines where you've got to be very very tight on the pipe you don't want to wash if you're two or three car lengths wide you're just washing off speed so that corner speed linking the corners together as ryan said i think is really really critical and there is a lot of these corners that are kind of a third to two thirds throttle so you've got to keep that corner speed linking this section together. Quite a fun section. Um, maybe one of the sections where you can nip up the inside of someone if they're a little wide. I think one of the things that we noticed then in seating was, you know, passing is going to be difficult. Um, so you're really going to wait till someone goes a little wide so you can nip up the inside. Yeah, so it's very, the track doesn't look very technical just because of like the lack of jumps compared to years past. Um, but the technical part of it comes from just this high speed section. So, I mean, your car's getting unweighted there and then you're trying to get your car in an arc so that it, you're within like a foot and a half of this pipe. I mean, really, if, if, if you're out here, you're losing at least a two to three tenths. Uh, and that goes with pretty much every corner on the track. Like, uh, this is where the grip is and you can really, you can really tell when you hit this corner, right? Because it, it just, it feels good. Yeah, like it hugs the pipe because you got that much grip. Yeah, you're, you're out like a meter from the the rope, and it's just completely, completely less grip. So, yeah. and not to mention if you're like a a meter off the rope, then you're adding so much extra meters to your whole lap. You know, this this yeah. whole lap's probably 400 meters, and if you're you're missing your apexes, you could be adding an extra 20, 30 meters over a whole lap, um, which obviously adds up to quite a bit of time. Uh, this next section through here, quite an unusual section, like. It's super easy to hit this, there's a little like riser here and then it just unsettles yourself um, for the next corner. Um, but you can see right on the rope there, um, there's not much of a kicker, it's a bit smoother. Um, so being reasonably tight here is pretty important. If you're about a metre off here, you can see there's just a small lip there. Um, and then that sort of bucks the car as you come around and then mm -hmm. it's really hard to carry corner speed in the next section. Yeah, this is another crucial part of a getting down into the 36s i mean if you miss this line right here it's going to be hard to do a 36 no matter how good the rest of your lap is uh, just because it, it like he said your car gets air off of that and you end up way out outside um and then it, and and you're just losing traction the whole time so yeah i think that's a big feature of the track right is there are these little rises and falls and it unweights the car and as soon as it unweights that 
you're losing grip. I mean, I'm finding here, I'm super tight because I noticed this yesterday. This would probably be the, the least smooth part of the track. And if you're out here, it tends to catch the rear end and you get bucked a little bit and it pushes you wide. So I'm running an inside line here to try and miss that and then just shooting over to the next sort of tabletop hip corner jump, which is a fun part of the track. Um, another good place to pass. I like to be nice and tight here, run a tight line, let the car hold itself up on the corner as the whole thing falls away. And it's quite an aggressive um, amount of camber in the corner. Again, hard to see from the driver's stand, but nice and tight on the pipe here. As soon as you're a car length off, you're just washing out and losing corner speed here. Yeah, definitely. One of the few blind spots of the track, you maybe lose your car for just a tenth of a second or so, but if you overshoot this jump, uh, you're falling down this hill and it doesn't look like much, but when you do it, you know because you, you, you just know that you lost time. Surface is holding up pretty well. I think you can see on the video, you know, the consistency of the surface is good. And one of the things that they've done, which I think is a really nice feature and I applaud them, is they've painted all of the grass and the infield green. And then they ended up spraying PVA glue with a water mix um, over the top of that. And that's helped keep the dust down. We saw last year, a lot of people were bringing dust from offline or if they had a little excursion, um, they're bringing that back onto the line. So I think that's helped significantly, probably 40 or 50% um, less dust on the track that we saw last year. And that's helped keep that nice clean line for us, which has been good. And I think the surface is holding up really well. The track crew is pretty happy with it. And we get into the next section and, and you know, Ryan, I, I saw yesterday when I was watching, you had this section really dialed. I think this is a key section to knocking tents off the lap. Um, Last year, it linked together a little differently. I'm kind of running this one nice and tight, letting the car drift out a little bit and then onto the power as you go over that riser and you're doing it better than most as I watched uh, you get through here yesterday. Oh, man, me, cleaning you, the tabletop is cool, right? Oh yeah, if you can get it on the inside, like super tight, it, it's almost like it's a little bit blind coming down the hill when you're right on the, on the pipe, but it is so fast, eh? Yeah. Like it, the difference between being out here and right on the on the pipe is just crazy, man. Yeah, and it and it really sets you up for that next section as well. Yeah, it's a massive difference, like you said. I mean, even if you land right here in all these divots, um, your car will kind of bounce, and then you shoot out to the outside, and, and now you're in the in the dust. That's interesting. Um, There's quite a big fold there too. See, have a look at that. So if you're on the inside, yeah, well, look how soft soft the, the clay is with the yeah. With that's the oil been there, there since uh, since Monday. There you go. But yeah, definitely don't want to hit that. So ideally you're landing on the inside and what's tricky about this um, is from the driver's stand, you can't tell that it's kind of one big arc. It just looks like a 90 degree corner. Um, so you you kind of have to tell yourself when you land this to just drive straight and then turn, like make a 90 right here and shoot over the hill. It's easy to like steer into this pipe. Oh, totally. And and this, this hill here, you don't even really get air off it. Um, you can get a small amount if you're coming through really tight and lots of speed, um, but you kind of want to just just lip the top and roll this top so you've got sort of power as you come down the hill and then um, leading into the next section. If you're jumping, you can get a little bit squarely on the landing. Um, yeah, I'm just not getting as much air off that if I can handle it, and then um, this corner can be you know, pretty tidy. Yeah, it's definitely not a jump through there, but I notice when, you know, the fast laps, the car is unweighted. It's definitely four yeah. wheels off, yeah. right? But it's, you're not jumping down to here, but it's unweighted. It settles and then you're on the gas and you're on a really tight line through here. I think that's, you know, that's a really big key part of a quick lap as well. It's and a fun section. You know when you get that right and you're like, right, now I'm on a quick lap. Oh, I yeah, just got to make sure I string the rest of it yeah. together. Uh, interesting. I mean, last year this was, you know, quite a big jump into here. Yeah. Um, and they've, they've made it into more of a mound um, and way less dust and stuff on the line here. It's really quite tidy. I mean, they've probably blown it a little bit, but even through the through the run, um, way less dust on the line compared to last year. And with the dust right on this section, this this was the hardest double um, last year and, and it's heaps easier this year. So Yeah, this section here last year, everyone will remember, was a double, 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 double. It was uh, critical, super difficult. Now it's super easy. Um, you know, you're just running one double and then just shooting out of this section. I think it's made for um, 
better racing. There was a lot of issues with marshalling here last year. Cars upside down, cars everywhere. It was really tricky to get a, uh, a quick lap through here with traffic. So I think that's a real positive change that they've made. Yeah, definitely. Last year looked tough and it's quite a bit easier just to get over this jump. Um, but it's very hard to hit this section perfectly. Um, and you know when you do, like, there's a lot of grip to be found on the inside right there. And you can kind of stay on power and hit this. And, I mean, it's by far the most satisfying part of the track for me to get right. Um, because it's, it's such a good feeling. Um, just one of those sections that is rare to find on track layouts. Yeah, it's a cool section, right? That, those sort of previous three corners that we had, when you link all of that together, it feels really good. You know you're going quick. And it's a fun part of the track. So here, um, yeah, we just single out, landing three or four meters up here. And, you know, this part of the track for me that we're coming into is probably the most questionable part of the track. Um, you know, you're, you're at top speed, you're flying through here. And then we go into this kind of step up, which is on a corner, um, which is a unique place to put it. You know, jumps at the end of short shoots and straights. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting when it comes down to finals time some people are trying to jump it um, consistently what I've looked at doing is kind of just popping onto the top and driving out of it Ryan what's your preferred line through here um, so if you come check out this face it's it's not your uh, it doesn't look like the, all the other jump faces here it's pretty beat up looks more like where I'm from um, yeah your car's doing different stuff over this pretty much every time and it's been hard to get right, be consistent over it. Um, it's definitely the complete opposite vibe of the rest of the track that you've just seen, but definitely throws in a, in a kicker. Um, usually I'm trying to kind of come out wide off of this maybe short straight. And this, I'd say this is a good spot to hit it because you've got a left-hander about 45 degrees right after. So you wanna make this as straight as possible. Um, now it's challenging because the jump face doesn't exactly get you there every time cleanly so you're, you're almost saving the car on the landing and trying to stay out of the dust as you'll see up here yeah it's just a little inconsistent i think right so that's uh something a little unique and different um hopefully they have a think about that for next year with a pipe sticking out you definitely don't want to run a tight line there or, or that's going to catch your front left and bring you undone powering out of this section um into one of zach's favorite parts talk us through that yeah, I mean, completely different to last year, but still the same challenge that we've got, and that's just pulling up. Because you're so fast as you come through this section. Like, you're, you're full throttle, and then you're trying to pull the car up on a pretty tight hairpin. Um, and I think probably even almost braking a little bit earlier and then powering through the corner, especially just with the way the jump is coming out of the corner. Um, if you come in really tight, sometimes it's a bit hard to, to land over the next jump section, so you kind of need to power through the corner just so you make sure you're, you're clearing the next section. Yeah, definitely. This is a, another one of those spots where your timing with the brakes is absolutely critical. Uh, if you go too early, you're going to be into the pipe possibly. And if you go too late, you're going to be out in the dust. So yeah, your car's going super fast and you've got to be on it with your timing through this section for sure. And then like Zach said, this can be difficult to get up if you're, if you're too tight. So you almost need to car be carrying some amount of speed just to get over this. And this this is probably a good like vantage point just to have a look at just how good they've done the banner walls and stuff around the track uh, this year. I mean, they've stepped it up even further from next year, last year, and it was it's really got a velodrome feel um, for the entire facility. They've done gardens, they've got future bamboo that's gonna really enclose in the track and the facility. Um, it just gives such a good feeling um, when you're on the driver's stand. It, you can just sort of feel locked in with the car and. You know, to have all these sponsors on board um, to host such an amazing event, um, you know, just shows this is the biggest Philippine Masters and ABC round that they've had in the Philippines. So looking forward to progressing on um, from this and um, seeing what they can do here next year. Yeah, I think they've set it up fantastically, you know, with um, the Philippine Masters running for so many years now, the event's got huge credibility. And now with it tying in with ABC, the event's just got even bigger, right? There's so many pros that are here fast folks from all over the Asia Pacific region. So it's great to see really good aspect as well. You can see all of the different elevation and there's a huge amount. I think it's great. You can see that from here. Yeah. 
You just don't see this from up on the stand. We don't see it from the stand. No. You don't get the feeling of the elevation yeah. um, that you do when you walk it and when so you look at so it from much, this angle. There's so much elevation. It's crazy. It's a lot of dirt yeah, to be able to build something like this. Full credit to them. Great job with the build. As I say, not as many jumps as last year, but super fun, yeah. super fast and technical in a different way and challenging all the drivers. Absolutely. And this is the end of the lap, really. So we're coming around this left-hander um, over a tabletop, relatively straightforward. If you get good drive out of this left-hander, you're clearing the tabletop. I've noticed a few people, if you don't get great drive out of there, if you don't have the grip that you're looking for, um, you can potentially catch the rear end here. It flips the car. But a good exit here is landing, downsiding, shooting across, counting another lap, hopefully a 36.2 or a 36.1, or maybe even breaking into 35s, Ryan. What do you think? Uh, I think it's possible for sure, especially in the e-buggy class. So we'll see. I think the lowest today, fastest going around the track was Yorn in e-buggy, 36.0. I think I did a 36-1, and but uh, yeah, there's a few guys that are close, and I think Davide lands tonight, so yeah, I'm sure he'll put together some good laps too. So Yeah, it'll be amazing. We've got some qualifying coming up tomorrow, so join us for that. It's going to be really exciting as we get into Friday, ABC Round 2 here in Manila in the Philippines. Thanks for joining us for the track walk.